What if I told you there's a soldering iron out there that can handle top tier JBC tips, can run on USB-C and costs less than 30 bucks? Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, meet the Secure S99, a game changer in the world of portable soldering irons. Today we are diving into a soldering iron that packs a lot of features and is extremely affordable. The soldering iron alone, with a tip included in the box, will cost you only 24 USD at the time of recording this video. It's an extremely simple and portable device and compared to my old TS100, the build quality is a night and day difference. The new iron weighs a little bit more and overall feels way more robust. The grip is improved and almost every little thing I didn't like about the TS100 was improved in some way with this new iron. With a proper power supply, it can reach power up to 150 watts, allowing you to solder huge power planes with ease. And since it's a C245 style handle, you can fit any original tip inside. JBC tips come in over 500 different shapes and sizes and are overall one of the best you can get. Original JBC irons usually come with a very high price, so this sub $30 iron caught my eye the moment I saw it. To swap the tips, there are no screws or nuts and you simply take the current one out and pop in a new one. In this video I'll show you what's included in the box and how everything works. I'll be comparing the iron to my old TS100 and later on in the video I'll be taking it apart too so you can see what's inside. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay is known for their high-end PCB prototyping services, but recently they expanded with 3D printing and CNC milling too. 3D printing is the most interesting service to me personally, and the really cool thing is that they can not only 3D print plastic, but also aluminium, stainless steel and even titanium, which is just on another level. To get your quote instantly, upload your CAD files and select your settings. You can double check your file in the 3D viewer, and when you're ready to order, make sure to click the first link in the description under this video. The company link behind the soldering iron is called Secure, and they make all sorts of tools and electronics, all the way from soldering irons, electric screwdrivers, hot plates and even motor drivers. You can get the iron alone or the whole kit like the one I'll be showing you in this video. You can select your plug type and which tips you want. The kit comes inside this hard case, which came sealed in plastic wrap. We can see a lot of stuff inside and everything is organized and looks neat and well protected. The start of the show of course is the S99 iron. It has a USB-C port on the back and to power it you can use one of the two provided cables. A USB-C to C cable can be used to power the iron from a power delivery power supply. The iron can handle up to 21 volts which is the maximum of USB Type-C spec. The cable is braided, it doesn't get in a way, it's not too heavy and it lights up which looks pretty cool in my opinion. We get an included 60 watt power supply and since it comes with a US plug by default, an adapter is included in the case too. It's a really nice power supply and if you leave it plugged in on your desk, you can use it to charge various things like your laptop, phone, headphones, mouse, etc. It doesn't have to be used only by the iron. The included power supply will limit us to around 65 watts and if you wanted to go with higher power, you would need a more powerful supply. Some of the Lenovo Legion laptops use Type-C bricks which are more than 130 watts, but there is also a Type-C to XT60 cable included in the box and it's a much easier way to achieve higher power. With the XT60 cable, you can connect your LiPos to the iron, giving it way more power while also making it portable. Just make sure your battery voltage is not higher than 21 volts, so you don't break something. If you don't have such batteries laying around, you can also plug this cable into your LabBench power supply and power the iron that way. On the front we have a display with two buttons, and on the left is the soldering tip slot. I got four tips included in the case, and they are all of course JBC style tips, but to be honest, I wasn't really impressed by them. There are no markings, and they do feel kinda cheap, but I'm sure they will handle whatever I throw at them without a hassle. To install a tip you simply insert it into the iron and to remove it just pull it out. It's really cool that there are no screws or nuts in the way and it's really easy to swap them fast. With a proper base you can have a new tip up to temp in just a few seconds. To hold the iron we got a little stand and the only thing left in the box is the soldering wire and this silly user manual. And finally let's see how this thing works. To power it on I'll plug in the wall adapter and connect the type C cable to the iron. We can see the cable light up and right after powering the iron I got a check tip error so let's install a tip. Since these are not marked I'll have to say that this one is my favorite and I'd like to test it out first. This time I didn't get any errors on the screen and the display is showing us quite a lot of things. There is the current tip temperature and the set temperature. The iron is currently in stop mode meaning that it's not heating up. This little bar is your power indicator which goes from 0% to 100% and on the right of the screen we have our input voltage and input source protocol. To turn on the iron you hold the left button and you can see the tip heats up in just a few seconds which is awesome. I still remember the old days where I had to wait like 10 minutes for my soldering station to heat up so this is well appreciated. Holding the left button toggles the work and stop mode while pressing it once will decrease the set temperature. Pressing the right button on the other hand will increase the temp and holding it down will put us inside the main menu. Toggle the sub menus by pressing the left and right 
right buttons and to go inside the one hold down the right button. To go back hold both buttons and that's about it. In the menus we can change the working temp, the temperature step, units, change idle settings, set when the iron goes to sleep and drop the temp, you can change screen brightness, rotation and change the language. You can limit power, set your input protocol, calibrate the temperatures and do much much more. The included tips are rated at around 75 watts and come with a resistance of 5.5 ohms. They heat up in around 5 seconds with the included power supply and they are overall a good cheaper alternative to the original JBC tips. These are rated to 75 watts but this iron can handle way higher power. And to test it out I got an original JBC tip. At first I tried powering it with the included power supply but it just couldn't handle it so I'll use the XT60 cable instead. My power supply is set to 20 volts and this time the tip got up to temp in like 2 seconds. Peak current on my power supply was between 7 and 8 amps and the USB tester did show more than 130 watts which is just crazy power for such a little soldering iron. I couldn't think of a soldering iron review without an actual soldering test so here you go. It's really easy working with it and there's definitely enough power to do whatever you need to do at home. C245 handle allows you to switch tips fast and it is meant for SMD soldering as well and you can see that it handles it without any issues. The included pointy tip is precise enough to work with small SMD components which is a big plus. And now to compare these two. My main beef with the TS100 is the barrel jack on the input. It disconnects all the time leaving your iron without power without you even knowing. The tips are proprietary and they do die quite fast. To remove the tip you need to undo a set screw every time and it gets really annoying when you're working on something and need to change the tip fast. User interface and the display are pretty similar but the build quality is way better on the S99. Both of these irons are very portable and handy, but for a proper soldering station you need a solid base which none of these offer. The lack of a proper holder was driving me crazy and since there were no good options available I decided to 3D model and print my own. It worked quite fine, but for the S99, since it's a 245 handle, there are many options on AliExpress and I did order one a couple of days ago. These stands allow you to hold the iron, the tips and they often include a tip cleaner as well which is very handy. To take apart the TS100 there are 3 screws holding it together. After they are out, you can remove the back cover to get access to the main board. There is a separate PCB holding the main MCU and the main PCB is held to the case with these two screws. These screws are also holding the tip contacts in place and this is a huge weak point of this iron. These contacts get loose way too often and the tip sometimes just loses power which is incredibly annoying. On the S99 I see two screws and the one on the back holds the cover in place. You can immediately see the improved design. The tip holder is done a hundred times better and there is literally no way for this connection to get loose. The firmware is upgradable and after scanning the QR code for the user manual, it led me to the official secure website. The whole process is explained on the website, but I won't mess with my iron since it's working great and I don't see a need for an update. I'll maybe upgrade it in the future if they release a bug fix or if they add some new features. I did find one weird thing and it's with the older hardware revisions of the iron. They literally ask you to take the iron apart and solder a 0402 capacitor to the PCB. For someone like me, that's not a problem, but I can imagine it was driving people crazy. All irons after April 23rd, 2024 don't require this mod so from that point on we should be fine. Even if you have a decent soldering station already on your workbench, the secure S99 can be an awesome backup iron as it's powerful enough and can even be powered with a power bank inside of your pocket. It's definitely a nice upgrade from all TS100s and TS101s. The capacitor mod seems to be fixed but I still don't like the lack of a proper base and the included tips do feel kinda cheap but it's probably because they are. There are many great alternatives on AliExpress but if you want to get something really nice you can get an original JBC tip like I did. The price of the iron alone is unbelievable. The build quality rocks, included cables and the power supply are all awesome and this iron will definitely end up as the main one on my desk. Make sure to like, share, subscribe since in the next video I'll push this iron to the limits by finally assembling this power supply I designed almost 6 months ago. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.